Exodus 32 Then the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain. So the people assembled about Aaron and said to him, Arise, make us gods who will go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Tear off the gold rings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. Then all the people tore off the gold rings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he took this from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made it into a molten calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. And Aaron looked and built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to Yahweh. So the next day they rose early and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, Go, go down at once, for your people whom you brought up from the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have quickly turned aside from the way which I commanded them. They have made for themselves a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. And Yahweh said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, they are a stiff-necked people. Now then, let me alone, that my anger may burn against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make you a great nation. Then Moses entreated the favor of Yahweh his God, and said, O Yahweh, why does your anger burn against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a strong hand? Why should the Egyptians speak, saying, With evil intent he brought them out to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent concerning doing harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants to whom you swore by yourself, and you said to them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens, and all this land of which I have spoken I will give to your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. So Yahweh relented concerning the harm which he said he would do to his people. Then Moses turned and went down the mountain. And the two tablets of the testimony were in his hand, tablets which were written on both sides. They were written on one side and the other. Now the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. Then Joshua heard the sound of the people as they shouted, and he said to Moses, There is a sound of war in the camp. But he said, It is not the sound of the cry of triumph, nor is it the sound of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing I hear. Now it happened, as soon as Moses came near the camp, that he saw the calf in the dancing, and Moses' anger burned, and he threw the tablets from his hand and shattered them at the foot of the mountain. Then he took the calf which they had made and burned it with fire, and ground it to powder and scattered it over the surface of the water, and made the sons of Israel drink it. Then Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you, that you have brought such great sin upon them? And Aaron said, do not let the anger of my Lord burn. You know the people yourself, that they are prone to evil. Indeed, they said to me, Make gods for us who will go before us. For this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And I said to them, Whoever has any gold, let them tear it off. So they gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Now Moses saw that the people were out of control, for Aaron had let them get out of control to be a derision among their enemies. So Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Whoever is for Yahweh, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered together to him. And he said to them, Thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel, Every man among you put his sword upon his thigh, and go back and forth from gate to gate in the camp, and kill every man his brother, and every man his friend, and every man his neighbor. So the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and about three thousand men of the people fell that day. Then Moses said, Be ordained today to Yahweh, for every man who has been against his son and against his brother, in order that he may bestow a blessing upon you today. Now it happened on the next day that Moses said to the people, You yourselves have committed a great sin, but now I am going up to Yahweh. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Then Moses returned to Yahweh and said, Alas, this people has committed a great sin, and they have made gods of gold for themselves. But now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, 
Please, blot me out from your book which you have written. And Yahweh said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. But now go, guide the people where I told you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I punish, I will punish them for their sin. Then Yahweh smote the people because of what they did with the calf which Aaron had made. John 11 Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was the Mary who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he then stayed two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said these things, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go so that I may awaken him. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be saved from his sickness. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he was speaking of actual sleep. So Jesus then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Therefore Thomas, who was called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, so that we might die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about fifteen stadia away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die, ever. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who comes into the world. And when she had said this, she went away and called Mary her sister, saying secretly, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and was coming to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews, who were with her in the house and consoling her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, they followed her, thinking that she was going to the tomb to cry there. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her crying, and the Jews who came with her also crying, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man also from dying? So Jesus, again being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave, now it was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time he smells, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I knew that you always hear me. But because of the crowd standing around, I said this, so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, 
Come forth. The man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Therefore many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he had done believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done. Therefore the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the Sanhedrin together and were saying, What are we doing? For this man is doing many signs. If we let him go on like this, all will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you take into account that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation not perish. Now he did not say this from himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but in order that he might also gather together into one the children of God who were scattered abroad. So from that day on they planned together to kill him. Therefore Jesus no longer continued to walk openly among the Jews, but went away from there to the region near the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there he stayed with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up to Jerusalem from the region before the Passover to purify themselves. So they were seeking Jesus, and were saying to one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think, that he will not come to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he was to report it, so that they might seize him. Proverbs 8 Does not wisdom call, and discernment give forth her voice? At the top of the heights upon the way, where the pathways meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gates, at the opening to the city, at the entrance of the doors, she makes a shout. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O simple ones, understand prudence, and, O fools, understand a heart of wisdom. Listen, for I will speak noble things, and the opening of my lips will reveal upright things. For my mouth will utter truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips." All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straightforward to him who understands, and right to those who find knowledge. Take my discipline, and not silver, and knowledge rather than the choicest fine gold. For wisdom is better than pearls, and all desirable things cannot compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and I find knowledge and discretion." The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance in the evil way, in the mouth of perverted words, I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. Might is mine. By me kings reign, and rulers mark out righteousness. By me princes rule, and nobles, all who judge rightly. I love those who love me, and those who earnestly seek me will find me. Riches and glory are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than fine gold, even pure gold, and my produce better than choice silver. I walk in the path of righteousness, in the midst of the pathways of justice, to give those who love me an inheritance of wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. Yahweh possessed me at the beginning of his way, because his deeds of old. From everlasting I was installed. From the beginning, from the earliest times of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs heavy with water. Before the mountains were settled. Before the hills, I was brought forth. While he had not yet made the earth and the fields outside, nor the first dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he marked out a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When the springs of the deep became strong when he set for the sea its boundary, so that the water would not pass over his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him as a master workman, and I was a daily delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the world, his earth. My delight is in the sons of men. So now, O sons, listen to me, for blessed are they who keep my ways. Hear discipline and be wise, and do not neglect it. How blessed is the man who hears me, to watch daily at my doors, to keep watch at my doorposts. 
For he who finds me finds life and obtains favor from Yahweh. But he who sins against me does violence to his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Ephesians 1 Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before Him in love, by predestining us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, which He graciously bestowed on us in the Beloved, in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our transgressions according to the riches of His grace, which He caused to abound to us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure which He purposed in Him, for an administration of the fullness of the times, that is, the summoning up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth in Him, in Him we also have been made an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, to the end that we who first have hoped in Christ would be to the praise of His glory. In Him you also, after listening to the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in Him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance, unto the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of His glory. For this reason I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus which exists among you and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you, while making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the full knowledge of Him, so that you, the eyes of your heart having been enlightened, will know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of the might of His strength, which He worked in Christ by raising Him from the dead and seating Him at His right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the one to come. He put all things in subjection under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all.